While Seattle is celebrated as the official coffee capital of the U.S., San Francisco has an underground coffee scene that is just as big and innovative. Today, I'm going to introduce you to five of the most popular coffee retailers in San Francisco. According to an SF Chronicle article, San Francisco has 8.4 coffee shops per every 10,000 residents. That's only slightly second to Seattle. Many of them are homegrown independent shops in the third wave flavor. This is where roasters source green beans directly and they eschew all those frou-frou drink ingredients in pursuit of unvarnished coffee flavor. Some might call it craft coffee. The first wave were the mass coffee producers like Senka and Folgers, and the second wave were the specialty coffee bars like Pete's and Starbucks. A few quick words on my criteria. In order to make it on this list, it had to number one, have somewhat of a household name within San Francisco, and number two, have enough retail outlets in order to be easily accessible. There are definitely a ton of independent retailers that some would argue have much better coffee, but we'll save those for another list. Okay, I'll start with the two more mainstream brands that have gone national recently with the help of VC backing. Phil's was founded in 2002 by Phil Jabber as a corner counter in his health food store in The Mission. 16 years later, it's still one of the more popular San Francisco-based coffee chains with 47 locations in the Bay Area, Sacramento, Los Angeles, San Diego, and Washington, D.C. It's still family-run with Phil's son, Jacob, as CEO, and it's also Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg's favorite coffee shop. They even have a Phil's Outpost on the Facebook campus. They source over 30 different types of beans from all around the world, roast them on site, and make their own special blends. What they don't have, however, are espresso blends. No espresso machines. Phil's claim to fame are their awesome baristas who customize each cup of drip coffee to your own personal taste. The most popular drink here is the Mint Mojito Cold Brew. It's got fresh mint muddled into the bottle. That's delicious, and it tastes a little bit like mint ice cream in a cup. The way to order this is sweet and creamy. Phil's uses this very rich and heavy cream that tastes like it has some buttermilk in it and is very heavenly and addictive. For coffee purists though, you might prefer the higher end, full body Jamaican Blue Mountain or the medium body Tesora Black. There are 47 locations in total, 14 in San Francisco. Blue Bottle is named after the infamous late 1600s Blue Bottle, which was the first cafe of its kind in Central Europe. The modern version was first opened up by James Freeman in Oakland in 2002, and it has now since expanded to over 60 locations worldwide and was acquired just last year by Nestle. This is the most trendy coffee retailer in the Bay Area right now. Their basic concept comes from Japanese craft brewing methodology, where the bean is roasted, ground, and brewed within a 48-hour period. And they only use beans at their peak ripeness. The most popular drink is this one, the Three Africas, which includes two beans from Ethiopia, one washed or wet and one unwashed dry and one bean from Uganda. And it's got a very rich chocolatey flavor to it, complexity, very clean taste. So it's pretty popular with everybody. But they're not always pouring it, so you're gonna have to go with whatever they got at the moment. Today, the pour over is the Rwanda Nyanza Iwaku from the Iwaku region of Rwanda. It is single source, and because there's such little water in the Iwaku region, they have a very small washing station, so there's a very limited and small batch of these. What they're mainly growing in this region is the bourbon coffee bean, which is much darker and heavier. Very nice. It's supposed to have notes of lemongrass and nectarine. Definitely, I can taste the lemongrass. Not so much the nectarine. It's for sure not a fruitier coffee. And it's got this really smooth and creamy rounded finish to it, which I love. On a hot day, try their New Orleans style chicory root coffee blended with whole milk and cane sugar. There are 60 locations, nine right here in San Francisco. The next three are still exceptionally well known in SF coffee circles, but smaller and more local in reputation. 
Just Like Glass was started in 2009 by brothers Justin and Jared Morris. They named their shop after the sighting or viewing glass on their very first vintage Probat Roaster. This is also central to their philosophy, which is transparency about the provenance of each cup of brew at every stage. The roastery is open to the public and customers are welcome to step up and see the roasting in action, talk to the baristas about sourcing, and also catch educational videos and events about the brewing process. This is our first and flagship store in Soma. It started out as a warehouse for their beans and the Morrison brothers had an old cart with a couple of Chemexes and an old espresso machine out front for customer tastings. Now it features a roastery, an espresso bar, a retail area, and an affogato bar upstairs. Their affogato is a single origin espresso poured over artisanal ice cream made in collaboration with Portland-based Salt and Straw. Ingredients for the ice cream are sourced right here in Northern California. Recommended brew is the Owl's Howl Espresso, which is a seasonally rotating blend and tends towards fruity and strong. Today's blend is made with Colombian and Ethiopian, and I got mine con cana, a little dollop of whipped cream on top. Cyclops with notes of honey, berry, and chocolate covered cherry. And it's all that, except I find the taste to be much milder and well balanced more so than the classic espresso. Plus, without a little water, the panna is great to cut the acidity a little bit. In general, people like it because it's a very well-rounded, versatile, good afternoon pick-me-upper. Another popular drink is the vanilla cold brew, which starts with the cold brew and adds in vanilla bean paste, some agave for sweetness, and either some whole milk or almond milk in part. There are five locations in San Francisco. Equator was started in 1995 by a couple Brooke McDonald and Helen Russell out of their garage in San Rafael in Marin County. The core philosophy is all about sustainability and they're one of the first coffee retailers to become a B Corporation or a Benefits Corporation which holds them to the highest level of social and environmental accountability. This business was exclusively a wholesale coffee distributor for almost two decades selling through high-end grocery stores, restaurants like French Laundry and La Boulange, as well as tech companies like Twitter and Google. Because they are one of the few retailers in this area to start out first as a coffee roaster working directly with coffee farms, the others on this list went through distributors before establishing their own supply chain. They have probably the most mature supply network in operation. In 2008, they even founded their own farm, the Finca Sofia, or Sofia Farm, in Panama, making them the most vertically integrated coffee retailer on this list. Their coffee offerings change depending on the unique brewing and blending of each lot, so I can't really recommend a specific coffee for you as it probably won't be here in a couple of months. But of course, the must try here is any pour over from Sofia Finca, their own Equator owned farm in Panama. Another must try are any of the geishas, which is a variety grown mainly in geisha Ecuador, although it's now planted uh, in a couple of other regions around the world. It's got really delicate floral flavors. Today they're tasting one geisha, the Puente Terrazzo from Costa Rica. Puente Terrazzo is a micro mill from the Terrazzo region and they mill beans mainly from the surrounding farms. This batch was made using something called a honey milling process in which the coffee cherry has had the skin and the pulp removed, but the mucilage or honey still remains, and that's how it's dried. While it's not actually honey, it gives the coffee a very mild and sweet flavor to it. This is supposed to have notes of raspberry, cardamom, and key lime. Let's try it. The first taste is a very full body chocolate flavor, and there's definitely this bite of acidity towards the end, although it's not unpleasant. It's definitely a good enjoy it and sip it for a long time kind of a coffee. In the summer, enjoy a shakerato, an Italian style drink made by taking espresso, simple syrup, ice, shaking it in a martini shaker, and then straining the ice out. I serendipitously ran into my friend Nathan, who offered to do a taste test for us. Yeah, very creamy. Wow. Tasty, sweet. 
It's like a melt as well, honestly. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> Equator has seven locations, mostly in North Bay, with three in San Francisco proper. Ritual was started in 2005 on Valencia in the Mission by Aline Hasi Rinaldi and her partner Jeremy Tucker. In 2007, Hasi Rinaldi bought out Tucker and he went on to open up another very iconic San Francisco coffee shop, Four Barrels Coffee, just down the street. Hasi Rinaldi first got her idea of opening up a coffee shop while in Europe as an exchange student at Brown University. The cafe was like a second home to her and she loved that feeling so much she wanted to try and recreate that here in the US. This original mission location became a comfortable space and one of the first Wi-Fi laptop bars where customers could literally park themselves all day. Soon it became the city's version of Woodside's Buck Cafe where techies and influencers hang and VCs come to make deals. While here, try the Sweet Tooth Espresso. This is generally a single origin, sweeter espresso and the producer rotates throughout the year. Today they're pulling a wet Kainanui AB from Kenya. This is grown no. on the southern slopes of Kirinyaga. Yeah, this definitely has a very rich and concentrated flavor to it. Ritualist notes of kumquat, a mulberry to it, and definitely there is that uh, fruitiness to it. Although it's definitely more on the berry side as on the finish, it's quite tart. And there's a little bit of sparkling water as a palate cleanser in between. If iced is on your mind, head over to their Bayview location for the exclusive Cherry Bomb. The classic cold brew poured over fever tree tonic, sweetened with cherry syrup, and topped with a maraschino cherry. Ritual has six locations, five in the city and one in Napa. Hope you found something on the list for your next caffeine fix. If you live in San Francisco, what's your favorite brew? Leave me a message in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and until next time, peace out.